The question on Marib and the conflict there is an important one. The Houthis have not supported the international community by stopping the war, nor did they respond to a total ceasefire called by the UN envoy a year ago. The Houthi strategy is a strategy of permanent war and guerrilla warfare, and it continues in this approach indefinitely. And the Houthis are trying to control the sources of gas and oil to obtain the salaries of the soldiers and expand all over Yemen. We are calling on the international community and the United States directly to stop the war because the situation in Yemen is very dire. The Houthis want to expand not only through Ma'rib, but also aim to reach the Arabian Sea through Shabwa, Hadramaut, and al -Mahra. This, of course, represents Iran and is led by Iranian policies. The new U.S. president, President Biden, recently announced that he would withdraw support, direct support, for the Saudis fighting in this conflict in Yemen. He also reversed the decision by the Trump administration, which designated the Houthis as a terrorist organization. Do you believe that the Houthis are feeling emboldened by the US decision? This was major political support for the Houthis, in my opinion. We view it from the point of view of attempting to solve humanitarian issues in Yemen. The U.S. believed that directly interfering would be valuable in Yemen because we have a crisis. But this, in fact, caused the Houthis to increase their operation in the country. Let's talk about the crisis in Yemen. Yemenis are suffering from a currency crisis, from a medical crisis, from COVID, severe food shortages. How does the... SDC, how does your southern movement plan to solve these issues if you maintain power going forward? This is a very important question. At the beginning of the crisis, and of course, with the pandemic in 2019, we have imposed a number of precautionary measures. Of course, talking about sanitary measures, masks and sanitizers and social distancing. But the infrastructure in the south is not really helpful. We don't have oxygen and the needed equipment. We only have less than 100 beds, which leads to many problems. We had very severe cases and a lot of deaths because of COVID, because we didn't have the oxygen needed and the medical infrastructure. This is something we still suffer from, and we have asked the international community to interfere, but we received no response at all. We have a very difficult situation on the ground. We ask for the help of the international community. Is the STC preparing for a future in Yemen where the Houthis are in power? We will negotiate with those who control the land in the north, be it Houthis or non-Houthis. This is inevitable. We maintain, however, that we will not put our hand in the hands of a terrorist organization and that negotiations will only take place under the umbrella of international and UN organizations. Many of our viewers uh, will have heard talk of the Riyadh agreement signed of course in 2019 by yourselves and others it was a decision to abandon self-rule in the south in order to implement a peace deal between the government of president um hadi and yourselves and at the time martin griffiths the un envoy to yemen tweeted congratulations to all and said the Riyadh agreement is an important step for our collective efforts to advance a peaceful settlement in the conflict in Yemen. Considering you are now talking about a referendum on southern independence and political discussions with the Houthis, is the Riyadh agreement, to your mind, dead in the water? Let's not use the term dead in the water, but let's say that we need to have a good representation in the South. 
It was an important step at the time that we responded to this Riyadh agreement because of the many humanitarian reasons we needed to have representation in the Riyadh agreement. We needed to be part of the negotiations for the will of the southern population. The signing of that agreement, the Riyadh agreement, was witnessed by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, and the Crown Prince of uh, Abu Dhabi, here where we are uh, in the UAE, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed. After five years of involvement in what is this bloody civil war in Yemen, the UAE withdrew its troops from the country, of course, in 2020. It is and remains a major backer of the STC. I wonder, can you describe the extent of the UAE's involvement with you? Of course, this is essential. Our ties to the UAE, our relation to the UAE is a partnership. It's a strong partnership in the field through combating terrorism. On the point of Daesh or ISIS, or other extremists. What is the situation in Yemen with regard extremist terrorism at present? Honestly, this is an important question. We used to have the UAE support to counter terrorism, and we were stronger then. Now, these groups are really a true threat and a true risk to us in Shabwa, Marib, and Adan, and in other districts. Of course, there is the Brotherhood, the Muslim Brotherhood, that are supporting these groups. We hope that we will not be left alone in this battle because of where we are. Because of our position and our alliance with the UAE, we are suffering from these extremist groups. We will fight terrorism and all our forces anyway. How much support does the UAE give you on the ground? The support of the UAE is little compared to the money sent to other opposing groups. It is limited. But when we had forces on the ground, things were really better when it came to countering terrorism. They controlled the space and the movement of the extremist groups were very limited. But now, after they withdrew this, these groups have more freedom. When I talk to people in Yemen, they say a Yemeni solution for Yemeni people. The international community has once again raised Yemen as a priority and says it wants to see a solution. The US has re-engaged. The Europeans have re-engaged. They support the efforts of the UN envoy, Martin Griffiths. Do you see some optimism for a solution, sir? Is that a naive position from the international community? The Europeans and international community don't have it right. I believe that. Because we coexist, or the coexistence with the Houthis is something that we cannot accept. It's not possible. So having different sects or coexisting with the Houthis is not possible for us. There is no point in having this cultural coexistence. There are no child rights. No women's rights for them. And the society, they are ruled by tribes and political Islam. So it's difficult for us to coexist with them. We might have a transitional period, but after that, we want self-determination and self-governance.